Welcome back. I'm Stephanie Rule. Time for my favorite part of the show, Money, Power, Politics. A new controversy surrounding the president's labor secretary, Alexander Acosta, and his involvement in the plea deal for hedge fund manager and convicted sex offender, Jeffrey Epstein. A judge ruling Thursday that federal prosecutors led by Acosta broke the law with that 2008 deal by not telling his victims about it. Epstein was accused of assembling a large network of underage girls girls using young female recruiters and then coercing these girls into performing sex acts. The plea deal concealed the full extent of Epstein's dealings, the number of victims involved, the names of co-conspirators, and shut down an ongoing FBI probe into the case, while Epstein could have spent life in prison. Instead, he pleaded guilty to two charges of prostitution and served just 13 months in a county jail. As the Miami Herald, whose reporting broke open the story, details, quote, as part of the arrangement, Acosta agreed, despite a federal law to the contrary, that a deal would be kept from the victims. As a result, the non-prosecution agreement was sealed until after it was approved by the judge, thereby averting any chance that the girls or anyone else might show up in court and try to derail it. This thing is a wow. It is certainly money, power, politics. NBC Investigations reporter, my friend Tom Winter, joins us now. Tom, what exactly did the judge say about this deal? Uh, so, Stephanie, it's uh, the judge established two key facts, and the two key facts are, one, uh, the federal prosecutors broke the law by violating uh, what they should have done under the Victims <laughs> Protection Act. So, basically, prosecutors are supposed to inform the victims of the crime, the people that they're, uh, that they're representing uh, in, in prosecuting these cases. They're supposed to let them know uh, certain steps along the way, and if there's going to be some sort of adjudication that happens outside of the courtroom, so some sort of a plea deal, some sort of an agreement, which is what we had in this case. So they were supposed to let them know. In addition to that, and I think this is also important, the judge established that Mr. Epstein committed crimes not only within the general Miami, West Palm Beach area, but also in other states in the U.S. and overseas. And it's kind of one of the slam dunk cases for the Justice Department when somebody is involved uh, with uh, sexual abuse or sexual contact involving a minor uh, and that activity happens overseas. It's one of the few crimes you can be prosecuted as a U.S. citizen for committing outside of the country. So if I committed a crime in, in France, normally the U.S. would not be involved in that because that's between me and French authorities. But if you involve minors and you involve sexual abuse, that's one of the few things that U.S. authorities can go after you for if you commit them in, outside of the United States. And, uh, and so a lot of people are looking at this and, and scratching heads. I want to show for us, I think, Stephanie, we have a statement from, uh, uh, from Secretary Acosta that we can show on screen. And I want to be able to discuss it because uh, it, it, it's, it's really one of the great non-statements we've had so far in 2019. Uh, he says that for more than a decade, the actions of the U.S. Attorney's Office have been defended by the Department of Justice in litigation across three administrations and several attorney generals. And I guess that statement is supposed to make us feel like somehow uh, that this is something that has been staunchly defended and, and multiple people have agreed with the defense of this. I, I want to let the viewers know and understand that, that really this is just something here where, where the government had to have this amount of time to defend it because it takes this long to go through the court system. And it's not something that people have necessarily been standing up for. It's just something that the Justice Department, because it took so long to go through the courts, had to go through. So I, I, it's just something where I think when people point out, uh, and the Secretary's people point out that somehow uh, this is something that has been staunchly defended across num a number of administrations and a number of attorney generals, it's really just going through the court system. So I, I guess I kind of just don't understand that statement. Yeah. Appreciate them putting out a statement. I, too, don't exactly get it. All right, but I have a great panel. Tom, stick around. Here to weigh in, A.B. Stoddard, associate editor and columnist at Real Clear Politics. Philip Rhinus, Philippe or Philip? Philippe. Philippe Rhinus, former deputy assistant secretary of state. Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com and an MSNBC political contributor. And Cynthia Oxney, a former sex crimes prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst, back with me. All right, Cynthia, legally... What does this mean for the victims? Because the judge didn't overturn the plea deal. Can they press charges? Well, we'll have to see. The judge said they have 15 days to come up with something. Um, under the Crime Victims Act, um, he can basically rip up this agreement. So there's a couple of options. Um, one is he rips up the agreement and a new set of assistant United States attorneys in the, in, in the Miami district look at the case. The other option is to is to have the case looked at in other districts where these crimes occurred. 
it, I can't even begin to tell you how horrifying uh, reading this order is. You know, we're supposed to be the people with the white hats. And um, in this case, the prosecutors essentially lied to the victims. They concealed what they were doing. They misled the victims. And Secretary Acosta was intimately involved in that. He was sort of sneaking off and having meetings away from the office to get it done. And um, it's, it's, it's somewhere, I'm somewhere in between enraged and depressed. I want to just scream about it because this is, everything we do as prosecutors has been done wrong here. My goodness. Uh, Philippe, well, we have to remind our audience, it's not just Epstein. Many of the people in his ring whose names were protected were among the most powerful people on the planet in business, entertainment and politics. What's your take on this? Well, I think, you know, obviously he's been associated with President Trump. I don't know how much he might have known along the way, but I think anyone watching... He being uh, Epstein. Epstein. He's also associated and with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. I, I think you don't know what someone's going on in someone's bedroom. You certainly don't know what's going on in their creepy private island. I, I think... Uh, no, but to say that he's been associated with Donald Trump, he's without a doubt been associated with Bill Clinton. You know Bill Clinton's been on Epstein's planes. That has nothing to do with approving his... I mean, President Clinton obviously does not approve of what Jeffrey... Sure, but does. I'm just saying, you just said to me... Yes. Uh, you, were, you were just making a comparison of Donald I, Trump. I inartfully... Yes, it's habit. Have it. You know what? But, but, just stick to the but it's relevant. Yeah. But it's relevant because Donald Trump is the one that put him in his cabinet. Donald Trump. Hold is on a chosen. second. We're, we're conflating things. <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump didn't put Jeffrey Epstein anywhere. Are you talking about Acosta? Acosta. Okay. I'm going to start using let's, proper pronouns. Let's start pronouns. again. Ready? Here we go. Start again. All right. Take take two. Here we go. Okay. I think any sane person watching this is saying, "How is he? He being Secretary Acosta." who is responsible for uh, the easy treatment and the leniency that Jeffrey Epstein saw while he, Acosta, was U.S. attorney in Florida, is saying, how is this man still uh, United States cabinet secretary? Now, I think that's a valid question. And instead of everyone just saying he shouldn't be, 35 percent of America are going to say exactly that. Well, he was pals with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was on his plane. Everyone's guilty. Everyone should... Uh, be responsible for Acasa. That is that that is simply not true. This is going to be another one of these slow motion cabinet secretary uh, car accidents, like Ryan Zicke or Tom Price, where four months from now is he still there? Probably not. I hope not. But why is he still there today? Why was he nominated? I mean, these are things that were known. Okay. Well, there is a Did good chance. Okay? That, but listen, it's you, not me. I'm, I'm all set. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Um, uh, A.B., but the president could take action. The president could look at this and say, hold on a second. Given that this is the person who oversees the country labor laws, right, that includes human trafficking, this could be a moment for the president to say, yep, thanks for playing, you're out. <laughs> Great advice, Stephanie. Uh, the White House this morning has said no personal changes to announce at this time. We're looking into it. Uh, and Philippe is right. There's a long, sorry list of disgraced cabinet secretaries in this administration, maybe the longest ever. And they've been allowed to toil um, long after they should be. Uh, this, it, uh, Cynthia's right. It's so disgusting. It's really hard to read about this. Uh, he ran a very broad sex trafficking ring, uh, traumatizing and abusing minors. It's it's just so awful. Um, a girl providing massages to him at Mar-a-Lago when she was 14 and becoming like a slave. I mean, it's 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 really unbearable. Uh, I hope the administration sees fit to do something very quickly about Acosta. Acosta was actually asked about this at his confirmation hearing in March of 2017. I want to play a bit of it. In this case, we deemed it um, necessary to become involved. And um, we, early on, uh, had discussions within the office. And we decided that, um, that a sentence, or, or uh, how should I put this, that Mr. Epstein should plead guilty to two years, register as a sex offender, and concede liability so the victims could get restitution. And if that were done, the federal interest would be satisfied and we would defer to the state. I just want to remind the audience, during that two-year period, Epstein only slept in that county jail. He would wake up in the morning and his private driver would take him to an office. He would go about his business during the day and then he would go back there and go to sleep at night. Uh, what are your thoughts on that defense that Acosta just gave? 
This and I feel like fire is, is about is, to shoot is, out of your is, head. Yes. <laughs> this yes. Is absolutely. I, I, I can't. <laughs> We can't get desensitized to this. How many people in this administration Amen. beating women, attacking women, assaulting people, abusing children? These are the people who ran talking about Pizzagate. This is literally Pizzagate in existence. And you have someone in the administration right now who was part of protecting it and lying and keeping children in the dark and abused. This is, this is to catch a predator and then letting him go. That is essentially what they did. And what offends me so much is- Worse than to catch a predator. Worse to than catch a predator. I mean- Eventually that, they got caught. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Exactly. Yeah. Someone said, partner, have a seat over here. Let him go home every day. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, am, I, am, I am disgusted in the outrage that every single member of the Senate should have, that they actually voted this guy in, is something that I want to see. For all the things that they can get disgusted about, I want to see someone step forward and say, President, President Trump, we have to get rid of this guy because I am sick and tired of us having an administration filled with pedophiles and pimps and abusers of women. All right, Cynthia, this is the part that but kills me. The judge said that the prosecutors knowingly misled the victims, these young women, into believing right. that an FBI sex trafficking probe against Epstein was still ongoing. But the truth was they had secretly closed it. What on earth, and please tell me right. they are major, are the right. legal implications of this? What they were saying to the girls was they were writing letters, have patience, we're working on it, have patience, which is just a total lie. They weren't working on it. And you know what fundamentally happened here? They decided, this is my gut as I read what they've done, they decided these girls were hookers. Oh. And they set up a situation, yeah. this is what they did, and they set up a situation that Epstein would pay these girls and that they'd be happy. And that that's what they did. And they hid everything, they hid the agreements, um, and, and set up a system where he would get a slap on the wrist. That's what they did here. They treated these girls like dirt, and it was their job to protect them, and they didn't do it. Thank goodness for the Free Press and the Miami Herald. Uh, then can I ask, Absolutely. what could, or is there, besides Acosta possibly leaving his post, is there any punishment for these prosecutors or the team involved? Well, it's being investigated by the Department of Justice. The problem is that, you know, Acosta's not there anymore. Um, we'll have to see how things shake out. Um, it, it's too soon to tell that. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.